Welcome to Clinic Synan Inlang in Denmark. My name is Dorte Borgqvist and I've been working with kids with learning and concentration disabilities since 1992. So now I want to show you how the brain functions. I here have a model of the brain. A lot of research has shown how the brain is doing different kind of stuff in different areas. Generally, the brain is functioning the way I will explain to you now, but a small percentage have things shift. The part of the brain that's painted red is where we use our muscles. This inner part here is where we concentrate on using our legs. The next part out here is where we use our muscles in the stomach and in the back. And this part over here is where we use our arms and our fingers. This part over here is where we use our lips and tongue. This bit up here is where we use our eye muscles. This left side here is controlling the right side of your body and opposite over here. This part of the brain has to control your finger muscles very well to give you good handwriting. This part has to control your tongue and lips very well, so you can pronounce your words correctly. This part controls your eye muscles when you read. If this part has to use a lot of energy, it affects the rest of the body, so the body can't sit still when you want to concentrate. If the muscles in the legs are too tight, it's very difficult to sit still when you have to concentrate. This part of the brain is a sense of feeling. If this part of the brain is too sensitive, it will feel like the chair you're sitting on is tickling you. When you read, right and left eye have to work together. This function is controlled by the little brain. The little brain also controls balance and coordination. The little brain is also responsible for you to pronounce your words correctly. Poor hearing function can also cause incorrect pronunciation. Now I'm going to explain about the hearing process. Hearing is actually sound waves that travel from the outer ear to the eardrum. The eardrum then pushes against the three small bones. And then it goes through this part that controls our dizziness and motion sickness. And it go then it goes to the snail and through the nerve to the brain. Now I want to explain how the two ears function together. So I want to draw the brain for you. First we have the sense of feeling. And then the other part that controls our muscles. And now the two ears. And the lips. So now you can see we are looking from the top. The sounds come into the eardrum. through the bones and the snail to the brain and also over here. These two sounds have to link together. If they are not linked properly together it can cause trouble in the next center. This control our words and ability to concentrate in background noise. It can also affect over here. This is the center for music and songs and the things you learn in rhythms. For example, 10, 20, 30, 40, that's sort of a rhythm. If these areas is, are disturbed, it's very difficult to remember what you've learned through hearing. Our memory is laying in the second layer of the brain. It's called hippocampus, which in Latin 
means, means seahorse because of the tail. If you have to remember and talk about the things you have learned, you'll have to use the sender over here. And you want to use this part here, which is the muscle for your lips and tongue. And then you want to pick up from your memory what you want to tell. If you want to spell something, you also have to remember the sound of the letters. If you want to read something aloud, you want to use your sender of hearing together with your sender of vision. This half of the brain is the detailed part. And this half here is the holistic or general part of the brain. You access this part of the brain when you speak your mother tongue. You access this part of the brain when you learn your second or third language. Because the brain concentrates on the new rhythm and tones. If your ears don't work properly together, then the whole hearing process can be affected. If you have had trouble with your ears, like extra um, wags, water, infection, or have had a blow to your head or neck, it could affect your ability to learn through hearing. This is why when we test for learning disabilities, it's very important to test the ears individually and how they work together, using both sounds and words. If the test shows that they don't work together properly, either in sounds or in words, we have a training program that helps synchronize your left and right ear, so you can learn to concentrate when there's background noise. This training also enables you to phonetically pick out the sounds in a word so you can spell it. And finally, it helps your ability to read out loud. When you read aloud, you want your auditory center to work well together with your visual center. Let me tell you about the visual center. The visual center is in the back of the brain. One eye is over here, and one eye is over here. And they cross and share the information in the back of the brain. It's then split up in various centers. One area is your orientation center. This center helps you to tell the difference between left and right, the letters B and D, words that can be reversed, such as was and sa. This area also gives you the ability to learn to tell time using an analog clock. This area is where you assess distance. There's also a center that is in control of math. On the detailed side of the brain is a center that's in charge of detail of words. If you can't see the difference between an R and an N, you'll have to guess instead of read, like in the words on and or. If you can't remember the details, you can't spell words that aren't phonetic, like in the word sign where you don't pronounce the letter G. That could give you both reading and spelling difficulties. In order to get this good visual memory, you have to have a good visual process. I will now explain how to get that. We have a muscle in the eye that helps us focus. It is a round muscle that has a lens inside. This muscle can contract and expand the lens. When the lens is flat, you can see a distance. When the lens is curved, you can see close up. The muscles outside the eye control the eye movements. These two muscles controls the side-to-side -side movements 
as when you are reading. These two muscles control up and down movement and you do use a lot of those with math. If they are not properly coordinated together you can get difficulties in reading or in math. These side to side movements are connected to our dizziness center in the brain. If you have a tendency towards dizziness or motion sickness you will have difficulty to, to get your reading speed up. On top of that it's very important for this eye to work together with the other eye which I'll now draw for you. I'm gonna start with the inner eye muscle. In school it's important to be able to see a distance so you can read what's on the blackboard. It's also very important that both eyes are seeing as close to equal as possible. It's even more important to have good vision up close. Standard tests don't account for this. They don't test your near vision and they don't test how the eyes work together. This outer muscle has to work together with this outer muscle. For both eyes to fixate on the same place. If the eyes don't do that, they can read two different words at the same time. In order to avoid this, the brain has to ignore one word or to spend a lot of energy to force the eyes to try to work together. And that is why so many children get very tired when they're reading and need a lot of breaks. Um, they have to go to the toilet and they have to have a break to have some water and so on. It can also be a, a, a problem if these muscles don't track together. This could lead to a child skipping over words when reading. These two muscles have to work together. If they don't, you run the risk of skipping a line when you're reading. You can do exercises for this muscle and lens until you are 40 or 50 where it sort of gets less flexible and you need reading glasses. There are exercises you can do that can extend the length of time where you can read and concentrate comfortably. After the age of about 40, the lens starts to lose flexibility. Then it's normal to have reading glasses. These muscles out here can also be trained. So you can read more quickly without skipping words or lines. The training will give you more energy, which can be used by your visual memory. That combined with your auditory memory which will improve your reading and spelling. For best results, you have to do your exercises for half an hour every day. If you do this, you can get new exercises every 14 days. After three months, we'll retest you to see your progress. In most cases, the program can be completed after 18 visits. Thank you for watching.